previously in that um, series and parallel circuits worksheet. Um, we, we talked about that, right? That's how, one of the ways that we checked whether our calculations for volt drop were correct is by adding those volt drops together and making sure that they equal the supply voltage. Now, Kirchhoff's current law is the same thing, but for parallel circuits. Now, remember, in a parallel circuit, we know that all of our voltages are going to be the same. The voltage on every every parallel resistor will be the same. Um, but we but we're aware that as the current branches off, we get different current values through different resistors. In a series circuit, the current's the same all the way through. In a parallel circuit, every time we have a branch, some of the current's going to go one way, some of the current's going to go another way. So Kirchhoff's current law says the same thing as the voltage law. The sum of all the branch currents in a circuit is equal to the supply current. So if I have three resistors in parallel with each other, then the sum of the current in number one and the current in number two and the current in number three will be the total current. And that makes sense, you know, if we just apply our, uh, our, our analogy of water, we've got one pipe splitting off into three and then coming back into one pipe, well, whatever's coming down the, uh, the main pipe must be divided amongst the three. And then coming out the other side where they join back up again, it's gonna be the same again. So that's my total current dividing into three. If I add the one, two, three, it must equal total current. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. Cool. Okay, so in this example here, we're actually, we're not gonna go through this because we've, we've already done uh, plenty of practice on this stuff. Like I said, we've kind of jumped ahead and now we're walking backwards a little bit. So it says, given the circuit diagram, I'll, I'll just talk through this. Uh, calculate the RT, so total resistance, uh, IS, that's the uh, current, here, IS, so current supply, I supply, I guess, current supply current. Uh, voltage across resistor one, so the voltage here. Uh, voltage across resistor two, three, and four is whatever that combined volt drop is. It must be um, present across all three of those parallel resistors. And then the voltage drop on R5. So how will I do that? Well, to um, see the next slide. Okay, yeah, so it works through it on the slides there. So we're going to um, firstly combine the resistance of R2, R3, and R4 as their parallel. So we'll use our parallel resistance formula to give me one single result there. And then to give me my total resistance, I'm going to add R1, R5, and that combined, combined resistance of R2, 3, and 4. Everybody with me so far? Yeah. Cool. And then it's asking me to calculate the supply current. So that's easy, right? I've already calculated the uh, total resistance. So I've added this one, those three, uh, or the result of those three, and this one here. And that's given me my uh, total resistance. So I go voltage, 300 volts, divided by my total resistance, because I equals V over R, and that will give me my total current. Then it's asking me to work out the volt drop across each of the three resistors. V1, uh, R1, R2, 3, 4, because we've combined those together, and R5. And that's very simple then of doing uh, V equals IR. We know, what our, we know what our total current is. That's this one here. We know what each of those individual resistances are because that's given to us. So I'm just going to go, this voltage here will equal 5 ohms times the total current. This volt drop here will equal total current times the combined resistance here. Now just put a little pause on this. We did cover this in the last example, but I just want to cover it again just so we're all we're all confident and, I, and you know what I'm talking about. Is that obviously the current in R2, R3 and R4 are going to be different, but the current of all three must be equal to the total current of the circuit, right? So one current flowing through here, one current flowing through R1, it's the same, that's my total current. And then my total current's gonna split. It's gonna split between R2, R3, and R4. But the total current between the three, as we just saw Kirchhoff's current law, must be the same as the, uh, the supply current for the circuit. So we can't get any more current, whatever is present at this point here, must be divided between the three, and then it must come back together at the end. 
So I, I don't know what the individual carrots are in those resistors, but for what we're doing now, I, I don't need to know. All I need to know is the total current that is going through the three of them together. And then that's going to be able uh, allow me to work out my volt drop. So I go uh, again, V equals IR. So voltage will be total current, the same as here, times the resistance of those three together. And that will be my volt drop here. And then same current here times the resistance gives me my volt drop here. And I should be able to add those three volt drops together, V1, V234, and V5. And that should give me my supply voltage. Any questions on that? Anyone confused? Okay, so let's move on. So it does should work this out here. Here we go. So we're starting with the total resistance of two, three, and four. So we're combining that parallel circuit. That's this one here, R2, R3, and R4. So 10, 75, and 200. We're using uh we're using the formula 1 over 10 plus 1 over 75 plus 1 over 200 equals 1 over 234. That's the same as uh, the one that we've been using, which is the brackets and the negative one. So same formula, don't get confused by that. So the total there then is 8.45 ohms. Does that look right? Yeah, well, I know that the, um, the total resistance of the parallel circuit must be less than the lowest resistor. Therefore, uh, it's got to be something less than 10. So 8.45 sounds about right. So then my total resistance, as we said, it would be R1, this one here, R1, 5 ohms, plus R234, which was 8 point, what did we say, 8.45, plus 25. There you go, 5 plus 8.45 plus 25 equals 38.45 ohms. Nice and easy. Definitely should have done this one yesterday. Yeah, shut up, <laughs> shut up. I know. I know. I just went on the order that was in Canvas. As soon as I opened this one this morning, I was like, ah, dang, should have done this first. As I said, it might be worth just waiting and doing the doing the test for this one before you do the electrical power and energy. But if you can do the electrical power and energy one, then then um, this one will be nice and easy anyway. All right, so then we want to work out our total circuit current, which is going to be uh, our voltage, which was 300 volts, divided by our total resistance, which we just worked out on the previous slide, was 38.45. So it's 300 divided by 38.45 gives us a total current of 7.81 ohms. Let's just go back here again and visualize this. So 7.81 ohm uh, amps is going to be emerging from my power supply, moving through this point here, IS, which is where I would measure my total current. We're going to have 7.81 ohms, 7.8, I'm saying ohms, amps, 7.81 amps, 7.81 amps. Here, that 7.81 amps will split. Obviously, some of it's going to go through R2, some will go through R3, some will go through R4. But the combined total of all three will still be 7.81. Where we join back together, all those currents combine again, and I have 7.81 amps flowing through R5 and 7.81 amps back to the end, back to negative. So now we work out our volt drops. So the voltage across R1 must be V equals I times R. And the specific resistance we're going to use is the resistance in R1. So the voltage in R1 will be 7.8 amps times 5 ohms, which equals 39.05 volts. Voltage across R2, 3, and 4 will be total current times the resistance in 2, 3, 4, 7.8 amps times 8.45 ohms gives us 65.99 volts. We just skip back to our diagram. That means I've got 69.55 volts here across each of those resistors. All three of them will get that same voltage because they're in parallel with each other. 65.99, sorry, I said 69.55, 65.99. Voltage across R5, again, using the same formula, current times resistance, 7.8 amps, that's our total current, times 25 ohms was the resistance of the last resistor, gives us 195.25 volts. And in order for me to check my results, I'm going to go and add all three of those volt drops. So the volt drop across R1, volt drop on 2, 3, and 4, and the volt drop on... R5. 
should equal my supply voltage. So 39.05 plus 65.99 plus 195.25 equals 300.29. And again, just the rounding in our calculations means that our answer is not exactly 300, but it's so close it doesn't matter. As it says there, should be within a couple of volts due to rounding. And as I mentioned previously, when we do our canvas tests, anytime you have a rounded result, uh, we, we um, the, the canvas will calculate a range. So it'll be, if the answer was 300, then it would probably be 300 plus or minus five. So as long as you get 295, or between 295 and 305, then it should give, it should, um, should tell you that the answer was correct. Okay, so now we're just gonna go back and do a little bit more checking here, right? So uh, current flowing through R1, well, we've already worked out the total current. So the current flowing through R1 should be the same as the total current, but we can now work it out because we know what the voltage on R1 is and we know the resistance of R1. So it's just another way for us to calculate the same thing and check that it's correct. So we go voltage across R1, which was 39 volts, divided by, because I equals V over R, 39 divided by 5 equals 7.81 amps, which was the same as what our uh, calculation for uh, total current. And we know that the total current should be uh, the same as the current in R1. So that is correct. Current flowing through R2. So now we can work out the current in the individual branches. So scan back to that one. So if I know my voltage here, which was 65.99, I've got 65.99 volts across each one of these resistors. So I can just, I can use V over R to work out the individual currents in each of those three branches. And then when I add those three currents together, they should equal that total current 7.81. Uh, so voltage in R2, uh, sorry, the current in R2. We're going to use that voltage for um, R2, 3, and 4 because they're always going to be the same, which is 65.91 or 65.99, it said earlier, but obviously a slightly different rounding, uh, divided by 10, which was the resistance of R2, gives us a current of 6.599. Voltage across R2, 3, 4, divided by the resistance in R3, 65.91 over 75, gives us a current of 0.88, so so far we've got 6.599 and 0.88. And then for R4, that was the bottom resistor of the three parallel ones, do the same thing, 65.91 volts divided by 200, which is the resistance of R4, gives us 0.33 amps. So if I, I'm gonna add them together, oh yeah, there we go. Uh, then we'll move on to the um, current in R5. We use our calculated volt drop, 195 volts, divided by the resistance of R5, it's 25 ohms, and it gives us 7.81 amps. Well, that's correct, right? It should be 7.81 amps. We go all the way back to our diagram again. We've just worked out our total current was 7.81, and then we've proved it by working out the current in R1, 7.81, which should be the same as the total current. Then over here, R5, the current in R5 should be the same as the current in R1, in, um, the total current, and the same as the current in R1, which again, we just worked out, 7.81. And then the uh, those three currents there are the current in R2, current in R3, current in R4, will be different, but they should add together to equal 7.81. And here it is here. So current in R2, current in R3, plus current in R4, 6.59, plus 0 0.88, plus 0 0.33, equals 7.8 amps. Current in R1 is 7.8 amps, current in R5 is 7.8 amps, all of those things agree together, we've got, we know that we've got the right answer, we've been able to go backwards and check it, that makes sense, right? And that's it, that's the whole slideshow. Great. I know, so... Uh, so we skipped that one and we moved ahead and made it hard on ourselves, but the advantage is now we're going back to that one and it should be really easy because we've covered right, that yeah. one. So everyone's going to smash this one out of the park. Uh, do we have any questions?
No questions at all? Okay. Okay. We'll see how we go. Now, obviously, as I said, when we do, so I'll, I'll write the uh, I'll write the Google form for analyze resistive circuits. Once I've done that, I'll publish that. I'll unlock that test, and uh, you should get a notification through Canvas that uh, a, a new test has been added. Give me uh, give me an hour. I should be able to get it done in an hour. Uh, in the meantime, you can go ahead and do the electrical power and energy one if you want. If you wanted to wait for the analyze resistive circuits, that's fine too. So that gives us four tests for this week. I know it's a lot, but um, I think it's a good idea to bang these ones out because they're all related to each other. So it's better to do all three while it's fresh in our mind uh, rather than come back to it again later and have to uh, relearn it. Uh, don't worry though, we will we will be doing, uh, now that we've um, uncorked this bottle, then, then Ohm's law and calculating power and stuff like that is just is part, of, um, part of everything. Uh, so anybody confused, we've got four, four tests from this week. We've got um, resistive circuits. Uh, what was the second one? Characteristic. Resistor characteristics. Yeah, that was a nice easy one anyway. And we'll have electrical power and energy and analyze resistive circuits. So four tests. Let's, uh, let's try our best to get those done by Monday. Eh? And again, I'm pretty sick of saying this, but I'll say it again. If you've got previous tests that you still haven't done, you need to get those done. Okay. Uh, my friend, you know who you are. You now have, I've seen that you've been trying to catch up on your module one test, which is great, but you're still not 100% on all of them and you've not done any of the module two ones. I know that you uh, want, need to spend some time to catch up on the module one tests, but you have to be doing the stuff that we're doing now as well. Otherwise, you're just going to be the same distance behind the whole time. So you now have. 13 tests that you need to do. Yeah, let that sink in. I'm not telling, I'm obviously not going to say the name, but you know who you are. And you just heard that reaction from one of your classmates. That reaction said a lot to me and just one little sound. It said, holy fuck, 13 tests. Yes, that's what I'm thinking too. Okay, so we're all good with that. We're, we will get, um, just get into it. We'll get it get it knocked out. Well, obviously we covered that topic real quick, so that will uh, save us some time this afternoon. Yeah, you can do it, bro. You can do it, bro. You have to do it, otherwise what's gonna happen? I don't know, When you, maybe when you get to 20, 20 outstanding tests, I'll just, I'll just kick you off the course. There's gotta be a point where you can no longer make it up, so you've got to invest that time at some point. Okay, so uh, the only other thing I need to say then is that uh, the next time I'll see you all is in our new building. So we are starting at Manukau on Monday. Um, as I, I originally planned this week for us to get in there today to have a quick visit, just so we can sort of familiarize ourselves with things like where are the doors and where is the building and, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, obviously, I was told I wasn't allowed to do that, which is kind of dumb, but ne nevertheless, it is what it is. So we're all going to we're all going to be there Monday morning. What we'll do on Monday is I'll, I'll just um, be in the in the lobby in the main entrance waiting for you at uh, at eight thirty, and we'll uh, get ourselves together, find everybody, and then we'll do a, a wee walk around the building and you know visit all the new places, uh, and then we'll get into our class at some stage in the morning. But it's, it, I'll try and keep it pretty relaxed in the morning, just give ourselves some time to um, figure out where we are, get our bearings, all of that kind of stuff before we put the hammer down on the on the next topic. Uh, is anybody confused about where the new building is? Has anybody got absolutely no idea? What's the address? Okay. Let's have a look here. Will we get our um our safety boots on Monday as well? Or? Oh, hopefully. Actually, thank you for reminding me. Um, so those people who haven't already got boots and did not make it into um into campus today, I know I saw one person who was just just arriving as as I, uh, I was leaving, and, and uh, so I have talked to them. But anyone else, 
Um, so you're obviously not going to get size. You just need to, going to need to tell me what your boot size is and I will tell the safety people. We need to do that today. Actually, after this call, I'll put a quick post on Facebook. So if anybody has not um, been sized or they don't have boots, you just need to tell me your size. If it's slightly wrong, bad luck. It is what it is. Should have come and got sized up. Uh, so give me a second. I'm just going to find a thing on um, Google Maps. Here we are. Can everyone see that? Okay, cool. Oh, you reckon the boots are a bit big there, Bailey? So maybe take a size down. Uh, if, uh, and Oliver, yes, you need to send me the size of your high vis as well. But that's pretty simple. It's just a high vis. So um, I don't know. You're probably going to be uh, Oliver extra, extra small. Extra, extra, extra small. Kids, kids size five. <laughs> I'll give you, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll order you a medium, Oliver. Or maybe I'll just order some random ones and everyone can just pick, pick from whatever's there. Okay, so um, I've got the picture of uh, Manukau up here. And you see here, Manukau Station Road. It's called Manukau Station Road because that's where that's where Manukau Station is. Over here is Rainbow's End, and here is the Manukau Mall. Does everyone know where I'm talking about? You can sort of visualize where Rainbow's End is. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to carry on. You're going to come over, if you're coming from the motorway, you're going to carry on past Rainbow's End, and you see Manukau Station here, which is also uh, MIT. The MIT School of Business or whatever it is there. Does has everyone seen that before? Yes. Oh, yep. So that's the Manukau train station, also the main MIT building. The new building is directly across the road. So we have our um, train station building here, M train station MIT building, and the new building is right in this block here. Let me turn on. Uh, can I turn on the old? Does it want to be dry? Oh no. Is it Lambie Drive? Yeah. Uh, yeah, kind of, but it's more on the corner of um, Wherry Station Road here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that, so it does extend it's this whole block, um, but the, the main entrance is, is down this end, the Wherry Station Road end. Um, how do I turn on? This, oh, there we go. There we go. Satellite. Okay. So you can see it here. It uh, looks like a construction site. It was a construction site. Obviously, when this photo was taken, it was still getting built. So this is our building, this big one here. So you've got the, the MIT building. Uh, you know that one because it's quite tall and it's got MIT written on it and massive, massive letters on the side, on, on this side here. Uh, over here is the um, Manukau Police Station. And over here is the Manukau Courthouse. So if you're coming from the motorway, you're going to come down here past the courthouse on your left past the police station on your left, through the next intersection, which is Worry Station Road, and then here's the building here. Now, there will be a, a vehicle entrance at the back here, you can see that, and there's car parking at the back here. I've been told that there are some pay and display spaces here, so you will be able to um, park in there and uh, pay, there'll be a pay machine, no doubt, if there's a pay and display, uh, but there'd be a limited amount of car park, so I would not, I would not rely on getting one in there. Remember, if you are coming in there, uh, you're going to need to use your uh, student ID card, your swipe card, to to open the barriers. Your other option for paid parking is across the road here. This this car park here. Same thing. You're going to come in here. There's a barrier arm there. You need to swipe your card, and then it's going to let you in. And there'll be pay, there's pay and display machines everywhere. Uh, every time I've been down there, there's there's plenty of parking in this in this area here. Obviously, it costs. Uh, it is what it is. If you want to park on the street, Lamby Drive here is the only place. Like Manukau Station Road has no street parking on it. It's all no parking down there. So your closest street parking is down the side of Lamby Drive here. Every time I've been to this building, there are um, there's so much 
so many cars on Lambie Drive that affect that all the way up to this giveaway site. So that tells me that uh, parking on Lambie Drive is a premium. Is at a premium. Uh, failing that, you could drive, you could do a lap around this this park here, and I think there's street parking all the way around. But again, I, I suspect that it will be. Uh, I suspect that it will be disappeared in most cases. If you want to take the risk, maybe you could park at the mall in the mall car park, or um, it's the mall car park here and here, or maybe even at Rainbow's End. But no doubt um, they will be keeping an eye on their own parking and maybe ticket or tow people who um, ticket or tow people who are parking in there illegally. So do we have an address here? No, it's not coming up with an address. Oh, yeah. 52 Manukau Station Road. 52 Manukau Station Road. If you're just looking for it on your GPS, type in 52 Manukau Station Road and it should take you there. All right. Everybody cool with that? I kind of, I, I vaguely sort of think that maybe half the class just won't show on Monday. They'll get lost or maybe too scared and uh, just won't turn up. But just, just come in, you know, it'll be weird first time in a new place, but after you get used to it, it'll just be normal. Give it a couple of months and you guys won't even remember what the inside of P Block looked like, I think. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Anything else we haven't covered or we need to cover? No? Everybody's how happy? How many people there on Monday, Dan? How many, how many people is it? How many classes? Yeah. Uh, that is a great question. I'm going to say maybe just us. Okay, so it should be fine to park on site. Uh, yeah, actually, hopefully it will be because I guess there won't be too many staff there either. Uh, the Monica, Monica might have a Trades Academy class there. I'm not exactly sure. Um, I don't think... No parking. Yeah. Well, they're, they're school kids anyway. They won't be driving. They'll come on the bus or mum will drop them off, I guess. It's the, the um, Trades Academy kids that come from high school. Uh, Jerry's class might be there, but I'm not sure. I, I doubt it, to be honest. He'll be too scared to get his class in there. He'll teach them online. He's too scared, <laughs> too scared of spreadsheets. He's... Oh, and he was spazzing. I don't know if any of you heard that this morning when we were doing that boot fitting, but he was having a huge sketch about something, yelling and screaming. He gets frustrated very easily. Uh, our friend Jerry's a lovely guy, but um, once he loses his rag, he just can't rein him in. And he, and, he, and he loves Donald Trump. So. Oh, it's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I, I doubt that he'll take his students to the new place on Monday, but he might. So so I'd say absolute maximum, we might have three classes in there. So yeah, maybe take your chances with the on-site parking or the one across the road. Sweet. We'll see how we go. Cool. Uh, anything else from anyone else? Ray asked if there's a cafeteria. Oh, is there a cafeteria? Yes, there is, Ray. That's a great question. So there is a small cafeteria uh, in our building itself. Um, I, I don't know whether that's open yet, but as, as far as I understand, that's just going to sell like um, coffee and sandwiches and stuff, nothing complicated. Uh, but there is across the road at the um, at the other campus or the other building, uh, there's, there's quite a few places down there around the train station. So that's just directly across the road. And then, of course, if you want to walk down the road, then there's the whole Manukau Mall, so you can get everything you ever dreamed of. Uh, yeah, so look, I, I, there is a cafeteria there. I'm not sure whether it will, whether it will be open. I, I can also tell you that there will be um, there is a, a student. Uh, I don't know what you call it, common area. You say common area, uh, and there's um, microwaves and hot water and all of that sort of stuff. So if you're um, bringing anything in, there'll be an area where you can reheat your food or make a cup of coffee or anything like that. But of course, see, now if we were there today, like literally right now, as I planned it, then I'll be able to show you all that stuff. So the first time you go into the building, uh, you know what you're doing, but they didn't want to let us do that. We're just going to have to figure it out on our first day, which again, it's just kind of bullshit, isn't it? Um, do we, are we going to have like an actual classroom or do like we have to bring our um, like laptops and stuff in there? 
Uh, we will we will have a classroom. So we, we've been booked to use computers uh, two days a week, just like we are now, um, till the end of the year, as I understand it. That, that kind of surprised me, actually. I'm, I'm surprised that they were able to get us in, but I guess it might be because we're first. It's easiest, easiest for us to slot in. Um, what I will say about that, however, so the first week, don't worry right. about anything. Uh, and this is going to be it's as new for me as it is for you guys. Obviously, I, I haven't been there yet. Um, so in the first week, we'll just play it by ear. Don't worry about doing anything. Um, again, I suspect, given the fact that there's probably max three classes in there in any given day, uh, we'll be able to go wherever we want and do what we like. Um, the timetabling ladies will probably get mad at me if we move out of the room we're supposed to be booked in, but I don't really care, to be honest. Um, if the if the rooms are available, we'll use them and we'll do we'll do exactly as we like. Um, but it, it should mean that we're able to have uh, whatever facilities we want, so we can just do our classes like we normally would. Once that building starts to fill up, so the next week there's another department coming in, and the following week there's another department, and so on. Until the end of the year, we'll have all five or six schools, I think, in there. Uh, then it's, then we're going to have to change how we do things slightly. The, the, the idea of me standing in front of the class and talking real loud to everyone won't, won't really wash anymore because if we have two or three groups in the same room together, um, all they're going to hear is me yelling. Um, and I, I think I can probably talk louder than most of the other lecturers. So, so then everyone just gets to hear me and the other lecturer will just get mad. So then we're, then we're going to have to figure out what we do and that's where we might use that Teams meeting, all have our headphones on so on and so forth but um but we'll, we'll deal with that next week for, for now we should be uh we should be able to keep operating exactly as we have been cool yeah cool 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 okay so from here let's do some tests uh well, i mean you've got till monday to do them but i recommend just striking while the iron's hot doing that now if you didn't get sized for boots and you haven't you didn't pick some up earlier in the week you need to tell me send me a text uh, with your with your site boot size if you didn't come in and get size for a high vis vest uh, just text me what sort of what size of a um uh, what t-shirt size or whatever that you wear like if you i'm not too worried about the vest because if you end up with a big one it doesn't really matter it's just a vest um yeah anything else from anyone else good okay i'll see you all on monday then have a happy weekend. Don't be don't be scared. Coming on Monday. I'll see you then. See you.